Hello everyone, it's Johnny Catru, and in this video it's my first listen to Paranals to see the next part of the dream. Paranal is a shoegaze and emo project created by an anonymous artist from South Korea. This album came out almost a year ago at this point and I've been seeing that beautiful cover art popping up everywhere ever since. The album seemed to have captivated a lot of people and I was definitely intrigued but I just haven't got around to hearing it until now. I've had a few requests for it but it was during the end of year best of 2021 stream I did where we were listening to everyone's favorite songs that Felipe requested the first track on this album Beautiful World and I was blown away by it so I decided it's finally time to give this album a go. The rest of this video will be highlights from my live stream over on Twitch where I listened to the album in full for the first time. If you'd like to join me for some full album listening parties you can follow me over there at twitch.tv slash Johnny So do me a favor and click the like button on this video and let's get into the album. So here we go, track one. It's called Beautiful World. Great bit of melody there. Fantastic. That's the song that got me really excited to listen to the rest of this album and that's only the second time I've heard it and I loved it just as much this time, if not more, because I had a bit more of a clear palette this time, whereas when I heard it as a part of the end of year stream it was mixed in with so many other songs. It's beautiful. The first thing I'm reminded of when uh, the song starts and I'm hit with the wall of sound and noise, the production style, it reminds me of uh, Death Consciousness by Have a Nice Life. That's probably the closest thing I've heard to this sound. It's kind of lo-fi but also very impactful. Like the fact that it's lo-fi doesn't take away from the impact of the music. If anything, it actually works well for it. So that was, that's what makes me think of Have a Nice Life. Aside from the sound being so great and so impactful, as I said, there's something really memorable about it as well and very moving. And in fact, whereas Have a Nice Life's music can be quite harrowing, I feel that that song and we'll see about the rest of the album, but that song is just very sort of bittersweet and just gorgeous. I've seen that this album is considered to be part of the emo genre, and I'm not super familiar with that genre, but what I do know is stuff like uh, Sunny Day Real Estate and uh, American Football, and I definitely pick up on some of that feeling in there as well, some of the emotion that I like so much in American Football's first album especially seems to be coming up a bit here. I do also want to mention that the piano riff in that song reminds me so much of Powder Blue by Elbow. I also mentioned that in my end of year stream. I was able to look past it a bit more this time, which was a relief. But yeah, I, I think it's just a really sort of typical arpeggio that you can play on the piano perhaps, and that's why it seems so familiar. But yeah, it works really well. Oh, I also want to say I really like uh, the guy's voice. He's not pushing the emotion down your throat with his voice too much. He's, it just feels very honest to me, that vocal style. So yeah, it definitely works for me. On to track two. It's called Excuse. Such a sharp sound in the drum. Surprisingly funky. That was surprisingly up-tempo compared to what I was expecting and after hearing Beautiful World. As soon as that one kicked in, I was like, whoa, <laughs> strapped in. Um, yeah, a lot punkier than I was expecting as well. Really a lot of uh, rhythmic sharpness, which I'm into. Around halfway through the song, I did start to think, this is very long for a song that's so fast. You know, like, I feel I'm getting overwhelmed by all the rhythmic intensity of it. But by about three quarters through, I started to think that maybe that was the point, especially because you had that section where all the different voices were appearing on both sides of the headphones. It felt like it was expressing that feeling of getting overwhelmed by being surrounded by voices or people, you know, just overwhelmed by people, other people. And then this kind of explosion at the end of it, 
where he screamed and you know it was like a cry for help kind of scream well that was the feeling i got from the song anyway and i felt that it was effective in that way but then by the end it was pretty beautiful i thought again but yeah the production is really interesting that's that's really uh, caught me off guard the drums are so sharp as i say but like all these high frequencies the the cymbals are all really loud and it makes them pierce through the huge wall of guitar that's really cool and interesting it's a big part of what makes it sound so thrilling and exciting despite being quite lo-fi as i said track three is called analog sentimentalism was surprisingly optimistic especially compared to the one before I really liked it though but it almost felt like there was a, a simple but very pretty pop punk song underneath all the guitar noise of that one i was in its energy kind of reminded of um brand new and even jimmy Eat world they're more commercial stuff actually it had that kind of energy for me i'm just realizing now that those guys are probably considered emo as well right it's all coming together in my mind now but yeah that one was again very beautiful but there was something very hopeful in it for me and i really liked it for that track four is a very long song 10 minutes long it's called white ceiling Yeah, I did feel for some of that track that maybe the the songwriting, the chord sequence was a bit overly simple for what he was trying to do. But I don't know. I think by three quarters through, I realized that it was appropriate. It worked well. And, you know, it was really all in the build for that song. And it did build to something really special by the end. You know, it felt really uh, climactic. Something else I'm reminded of is the band Cloud Nothings. I also remember thinking that their music at times reminded me of pop punk from the 2000s in the way they write their chords and melodies, but doing something a bit more interesting with it, you know, expanding it out, doing something a bit more artful with it than just uh, writing a, a quick pop song, expanding on the emotional side of it. And I appreciate that. Very ambitious song, that last one. Quite shocking that it was just made by one guy in a bedroom. You know, it sounds like the work of uh, a full band in a giant hall. <laughs> just goes to show what you can do these days with basic equipment. All right, the next song is the title track, track five, to see the next part of the dream. It's in five, eight time. Interesting. I think that was probably my favorite so far, surprisingly. I thought maybe we'd already passed my favorites <laughs> with the first two tracks, but that song was at the same time the most sophisticated track on the album yet, and it was also the most moving for me. I thought it was absolutely beautiful. Loved the chords in that one. But yeah, with the very interesting 5-8 rhythm and the way that it had the uh, acoustic guitars bouncing off of each other, there was just so much to enjoy in it. Musically really interesting and yet very emotional as well. That's a winning combination for me. So yeah, I loved that one. And yeah, it's surprising because it didn't really feature much of Paranol's vocals and his vocals have definitely been something I like about the album so far so interesting that um, I assume we'll hear a, a return of the vocals more in the next track so track six it's called Age of Fluctuation Oh, 
great changes. Well, I've got to hand it to Paranorm. So far on the album, every track has had something to set it apart, something different about it. And that's something I think is really important in a good album. And this particular song was the almost metal aspect of it. The opening riff, I thought, wow, this sounds so cool. You know, it's so cool, it's almost metal. And yeah, he definitely expanded on that as the song went on. I think it can be argued that perhaps he doesn't push it quite far enough. I feel like he does have the capacity to push his voice a bit further. The moments where things get emotionally intense, you, I do feel like some more intense vocals would push it even further. That being said, I thought the song was mostly very effective. I was really into it. It was memorable and I just like the fact that it moved away from some of the more pretty sounds of some of the other songs and just allowed itself to go somewhere slightly more ugly, which was very welcome at this point in the album, while still sounding completely at place, you know. The album feels very consistent and gelled, which is, you know, really impressive considering how each song, as I said, has offered something different. Feels very well constructed. Maybe Age of Fluctuation wasn't the most moving track, but it was a really cool track and compelling. Track seven is called Youth Rebellion. Not expect a drum solo. Nice. So that was for me another case of taking a the simple pop punk formula, but doing something unexpected with it, expanding it out, pushing it further than it would usually go. And in the first couple minutes, it felt extremely simple almost to the point where i was a little bit put off it was sounding to me almost like a radio pop rock song in a way just with paranol's more interesting production style and i was wondering where's he gonna go with this how is this gonna be a seven minute long song you know it sounded like it was gonna go for two minutes 30 and be done but i should have known by this point paranol always has something interesting to say something interesting to do with his music and yeah he certainly did with that one it went somewhere very different and we had that moment of chaos with the drums. I was starting to wonder, are these real drums or programmed with a lot of effects and interesting sounds? Because those drums were sounding very strange. My instinct from the beginning of the album has been that it's real drums, but with a lot of compression to give them a whole lot of intensity. But yeah, it gave the song a moment of chaos that I think worked really well. And then when it went back into the song part, it was satisfying. It worked for me. Next one's shortest track on the album. Track eight is called Extra Story. <laughs> unexpected nice little acoustic song from Paranol. Of course, a nice little acoustic song, it still ends up sounding huge thanks to Paranol's production style and the way he immediately starts layering huge synthesizers and his voice on top of the acoustic guitar. The chords were really nice, although the actual melody was nothing to write home about, I felt like. And maybe I had that feeling, especially because his voice was put at the forefront of this one. His vocals were sounding a little off key as well, which I guess works better when you've got a whole load of noise to back it up. But in this case, it felt a little exposed, I suppose. But it was nice and didn't outstay its welcome at least. Next up is track nine, it's called Chicken.
So I really liked the sound of that track, but that being said, I think it was the only track on the album so far to not surprise me in some way. It felt like it just did some stuff that has already been done. And, and honestly, on an hour long album, having a song that doesn't really offer anything new so late in the album is never a good move, in my opinion. You know, I can't help feeling that maybe we could have done without that one. That being said, it was it was pleasant. And I did like it. You know, I got some enjoyment out of it and I enjoyed the bittersweet chord sequence. But again, you know, I've already kind of heard that on the album before a couple times now. From a production standpoint, still, like the rest of the album, that one sounded great. I really liked the distorted bass in particular that had that have a nice life kind of feeling again. So I like that, but definitely not my favorite track, I'll say that. In any case, we're on the last song now. So hopefully he wraps it up in an interesting way that has something to offer like actually almost every song on this album has had. So that's why I have such high expectations at this point. Track 10 is called I Can Feel My Heart Touching You. Oh, those are the most electronic sounding drums yet. That was not a gentle fade out, quite an unusual fade out really. But yeah, I think that was a pretty satisfying closing track, quite happy with it. Um, the way it began with the more dancey rhythm almost, it reminded me of the way Loveless by My Bloody Valentine ends with Soon, also with the kind of upbeat dancey drum pattern. But in this case, it comes along with Paranol's very bittersweet songwriting which i thought felt very appropriate and this one also had a couple of uh interesting touches that made it stand out as well including that high lead guitar part kind of wailing over the top but yeah overall just rounds off things with a uh, an emotion that feels appropriate to the whole album because the album covers quite a, a range of feelings but maybe that kind of bittersweet feeling is the most common one it's broken up with excursions into different emotions but that feeling covers it pretty well i'm very happy with the album i do think it lives up to its promise well the promise that i felt it set with beautiful world which is emotional intensity engaging interesting production and something very real underneath it you know it doesn't feel contrived at all it feels like a uh, this is the artist's best attempt at expressing themselves and that's always something special when you get that feeling from an album and i got it from this one i think the only criticism i really have for the album is that there were a couple times where things felt a little more dragged out than they needed to and maybe the album as a whole could have been edited down a little bit but only a little bit because as i said earlier i do feel like almost every song had something interesting to offer had a little bit of a different take on what he was going for. I really enjoyed that about it. So there aren't many tracks I would cut out completely. I just maybe felt that as a whole, it felt a little stretched out. Looking back over it now, I do feel that it was a satisfying album. The first two or three songs really gave you some tasters of what he was going to explore. And then he really thoroughly explored all those ideas throughout it. I really liked that. I can definitely see why people are so taken with this music because it's very moving and it, it taps into some feelings and some musical styles that are now of the past, you know, that kind of emo and pop punk sounds approaches to songwriting. But as I said earlier, it uses those styles in, a, in an artful way. The way that Paranol does it with this kind of shoegaze mentality of, of completely swamping you in the music. It's not just the fact that it's shoegaze, but it's the way that the shoegaze is applied. It's the way that it's really trying to make you feel drowned in the music. It really successfully does that, you know, it makes you feel completely submerged in not just the sounds, but the emotions. It works really well. And even the cover art has that nostalgic vibe, doesn't it? So yeah, very beautiful album. 
And I want to say thanks very much to everyone who requested it because I enjoyed it very much. So let me know your thoughts on this album down in the comments. If you missed the stream and would like to see my full reaction, you can find it over on my Patreon. Whichever tier you support me at, you'll get full access to my archive of full unedited reaction videos. And you'll be helping me to be able to continue making these videos, keep my channels going, so I'll really appreciate it. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, take it easy.